realistic raindrops on the window using nothing but a single shader. Today we will be looking at how to achieve the result similar to this in Godot. So if it sounds interesting to you, stick around. Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. My name is Digvijay C. Gohil and today I will be coding a shader to achieve this effect. And to be completely honest, I tried the effect using Visual Shader Editor but it was just a nightmare. It was very difficult to manage, let alone be suitable for a tutorial. And even then I had to create some custom expression nodes. And hence I decided to just write the shader. In Godot, if you haven't written a shader before, I have a video called Shader Introduction in Godot. In that video, there's a brief section about writing shaders. I highly recommend you go check that out. For this tutorial, I will be using Godot 4.2. And now without any further ado, let's get down to the business. Okay, so I have a scene with a world environment node and an HDRI skybox texture. Let's add a mesh instance 3D node and select the quad mesh. This will be our little glass window. Now let's create a shader. Create new resource shader. Keep the mode spatial. I will name it rainy window. Let's also create a material for our shader. Assign our shader to our material. And finally apply our material to our glass window. In our shader, let's first do a bit of cleanup. I don't need light and vertex processors for this one, so I will simply delete them. Now right off the bat, my glass window is only visible from one side. And that's not how windows work, so I will say Render mode, curl disabled, meaning don't curl any faces and now we can see both sides of our window. Alright now for starters, let's make our window black, so in our fragment processor, let me declare a color variable, now color holds RGB values, so its type will be vector3 color and I will default it to 000. Then albedo equals color. Now let's create water droplets. I will create a separate function for that which will return vector2. Vector2 raindrops. And it will take UV as an input, so vector UV. And for now, I will just return the UVs. Now let's just visualize our UVs. So in fragment processor, color.rg equals raindrops and pass UV. We will use these UVs to create water drop. And I want to tile my UVs here because I want bunch of drops. So UV multiply equals 5 and multiply equals is just a shorthand of doing UV equals UV multiply 5. And now instead of going 0 to 1, the UVs will go from 0 to 5. But this doesn't look like a grid, so I will use fract function. So back to grid UV equals fract of uv. Fract function returns the fractional part of a number so 4.3 we will get 0.3 minus 2.2 we will get 0.2 then return grid uv. Now we have this nice grid uvs and I want to control the styling from the inspector so instead of multiplying this 5 here, I will create a uniform variable, 
let's go uniform uniform keyword will expose our variable in the inspector then our variable is of type float and I will call it scale and set the default value to 5 then here I will just use my uniform and now I can control the tiling from the inspector now if we look closely each of our grid box has origin 00 at the top left corner I want it in the middle so I will just subtract 0 0.5 here and each box will have the origin in the center okay now instead of grid UV let's return the length of grid UV and length returns float so need to convert that to vector 2 then instead of visualizing both X and Y let's just visualize X channel and length simply returns the length of a vector from the origin so at the origin we will get 0 then it will get bigger and bigger as we move away from the origin and now I will use each of these black dots as raindrops so let's use smooth step for that let me create a separate variable float drop equals then I will cut the length of grid UV from here and paste it here and here I will pass drop and that shouldn't change anything now here I will use smooth step so drop equals smooth step of uh, 0 0.05 0 0.01 and this length of grid UV and if you don't know what smooth step does then I have an entire video about it I highly recommend you go check that out as smooth step is one of the most used function in shader programming all right now we have a bunch of dots and this 0.05 is the radius of the dots and let me just use a separate variable for that as well so float dr for drop radius equals 0.05 and then paste dr here and let's just make the drops bigger so we can see them better now we can move these drops by subtracting vector 2 from our grid UV let's just move them up and down for now so I will create a float variable y and then use cosine of time then pass y here and I would also like to control the speed from the inspector so let's make another float uniform speed equals 2 then multiply over speed with time and let's just use a separate variable for that as well so t equals time into speed then use this t in the cosine and that shouldn't change anything now our drops are getting cut off at the edges of our grid box let me just display a grid so we can see it better first I will create a vector to output equals vector to zero then output plus equals drop then if grid uv dot x is greater than 0.48 or grid uv dot y is greater than 0.48 then make our outputs r channel fully opaque Then return output 
Now our drops are moving outside of the grid box. That is because our cosine of t can return values from minus 1 to 1. But our grid uv can only go from minus 0 0.5 to 0 0.5. So let's multiply our cosine of t with 0 0.5. So it can only go from minus 0 0.5 to 0 0.5. And now our drops no longer goes past our grid box. But they still get cut off at the edges. So let's use a smaller number. Okay, 0 0.4 works perfectly. But if I change the drop radius, our calculation falls apart. So instead of hard coding this 0 0.4, let's use a variable float d offs for drop offset equals. Now we know that our grid box UV only goes from minus 0 0.5 to 0 0.5. So the biggest radius to plot a circle is 0 0.5. So let's go 0 0.5, then subtract our drop radius. Then use D offs here. So now it doesn't matter whatever our drop radius is. Our drops no longer go outside the grid box. Now I want the drops to stick to the window a bit, then falls down, then stick for a bit again and so on. In order to achieve that, I want these drops to move down fast and move up slow. So instead of this cosine of t, let's use a different formula. So right now we have cosine of x, so our drops will move like this. Now I know of one formula to get kind of a sawtooth wave. It goes like cosine of x plus cosine of x plus cosine of x into 0.5. So now our wave slowly goes from 1 to minus 1 and quickly goes from minus 1 to 1. Let's use this in our shader. So now instead of cosine of t, let's go cosine of t plus cosine of t plus cosine of t into 0 0.5. And now our drops falls quickly and move up slowly. However, Drops don't go upward in reality, so I need to shift the entire grid down to compensate for the upward movement of our drops. So before we calculate grid uv, let's go uv.y minus equals t. And let's multiply some smaller number to create an illusion that our drops are briefly sticking to the window. Let's try 0.1. And our drops are still moving up, but so let's try 0 0.2. And this is a tweaking part, so you can tweak the values to your heart's content. Okay, so 0 0.2 seems to be working. Actually, let's just use 0 0.25. And now our drops are falling, then sticking to the window, then falling again. Pretty cool. Now one thing is, all of our drops are falling in very uniform way. And I don't like that. I want some randomness here. So first of all, let's create a custom function which returns a number. So float random number. Then it will take vector2 as an input. Let's call it seed. Now there are lots of ways to generate a pseudo random number. I like to do it as this. Okay, so here let's go seed equals seed into some bigger vector too. Then use the fraction of the entire thing. Now seed plus equals dot product of seed and seed plus some random number. Then simply return the fraction part 
of c dot x into c dot y. So this will return a random number between 0 and 1 based on the input seed. And all of this is just a maths trickery to get a pseudo random number. You can stick any numbers here. Just make sure that they are not direct factors or multiples of each other. Alright, now to make these drops fall randomly, I want a different random number for each of this grid box. And to get that, I need unique ID for each box. And it is easy enough to get using floor function. Floor simply returns the integer part of a number, so 1.23 we will get 1. So here let's go back to id equals floor of uv and let's just visualize the id. Let me stop moving this for a bit. So for this box our id will be 00, zero. for second box it will be 10, for third box it will be 20, for second row it will be 01, for this one it will be 11 and so on. Let's just return ID for a moment. In the fragment processor, I will go color.rg equals raindrop rg. As you can see, we have different ID for each grid box. We can use this ID as seed to generate a random number. But first, let me revert the code a bit. and the actual output and again make the drops fall okay now here let's get a random number float random number rn equals random number of id let's quickly visualize the random numbers as well so we have a random number between 0 and 1 for every grid box now to randomize the fall speed, we will change our t value here, so t plus equals rn. Now our drops look only slightly different. That is because we are using this t in cosine and the full quadrant of cosine wave goes from 0 to 2 pi. So in our cosine wave, here we have 1 at the input 0, then at half pi we will get 0, then at pi we will get minus 1, then at 1 and half pi we will get 0 again, then at 2 pi input we will get 1. So to go from 1 to 1, we need to feed the input from 0 to 2 pi. So here we will simply multiply our rn with 2 pi and we have a constant for that called tau tau is basically 2 into pi. And now our drops look random. Now let me pause them for a bit. Right now our drops are perfectly round. Real drops kind of look like they are smeared vertically. And to modify the look, we can change this y here. Let's just go y plus equals grid uv dot x so currently we are changing this y for every column of our grid box and they are kind of stretched a bit to the right side that's because our x is negative here and positive here now if i go grid uv dot x into grid uv dot x we will get this look cool now let's unpause them again Alright, now our drops are falling in line for every column. We can also randomize the x position using our random number. So here let's go float x equals rn and this can go from 0 to 1 but our grid box x goes from minus 0 0.5 to 0 0.5. So subtract 0 0.5 and then use this x and this vector too. And now our drops are messed up a bit. That's because we are changing the x position of our drops. 
So here we need to compensate for that. So let's go y plus equals grid uv dot x minus x and grid uv dot x minus x. And now our drops also have a random x position. But if we look closely, some of our drops get cut off at the edges. That's the same issue as before. So I will simply multiply this entire thing with D offs. Okay, now in real life, as the drop slides down on the window, it will get smaller because some of the water mass or water particles will stick to the window. And to do that, I will use the original UV's Y component. So this is our base UV. Let me grab the Y in a variable. Float BY for base UV's Y equals UV dot Y. Let's just visualize that for a moment. Output equals zero. It is zero at the top and one at the bottom. I need opposite of that, so I will go 1 minus uv dot y. And then I want it to only go from 0 to 0 0.7. So I will multiply the entire thing with 0 0.3, then add 0 0.7. And now it only goes from 1 to 0 0.7. Let's multiply our by with our drop radius here. So at the top, our drop radius will be 0 0.1. And as the drop slides down, drop radius will get smaller. And at the very bottom, it will be 0 0.07. And we can see our drops getting smaller as they slide down the window. Okay, now our drops are falling straight down. In reality, they wiggle a bit due to the roughness of the surface. So let's try to make our drops wiggle. And for that, I will need base UV's Y component again. So here, let me define another variable. Float W for wiggle. And I also want to control the frequency of the wiggle from the inspector. So let's create another float uniform. I will call it wiggle equals 10. Then here I will multiply uv dot y with wiggle. Now I will just use sine of w for now and change this x using it. So let me add sine of w on x. x plus equals sine of w. And I will also multiply the drop offset and our drops wiggle like this. Now to add a bit of randomness to our wiggle, here I will go w multiply equals rn and now the drops will wiggle a bit randomly. But some of our drops that start closer to our edge are moving past our grid box. So let's make it so that the drops that are closer to the edge wiggle less than the ones that are in the middle. For that, I will go drop offset minus absolute of x. So let's say our drop offset is 0 0.4 and if our drop is near the edge, the x will also be 0 0.4. It doesn't matter at which side our drop is, near the left edge it will be minus 0 0.4 but we are taking absolute of that so it will be 0 0.4. So 0 0.4 minus 0 0.4 will be 0. So this entire thing will be 0, so no wiggle. And if the drop is in the dead center, the x will be 0. So 0 0.4 minus 0 will be 0 0.4, so full wiggle. And our drops will no longer get cut off. Okay, now instead of this perfect sine wave, I want my drops to wiggle based on some random wave. So for that, I will use a different formula. Right now we have the sine wave, but to get a slightly random wave, 
I've come up with this formula which goes like sine of x plus cosine of x into 4 into sine of x raised to 2 and we have this kind of wave let's use this in our shader so here instead of sine of w let's go sine of w plus cosine of w into 4 into power of sine of w raised to 2 and here let's just decrease wiggle a bit and now we have drops that wiggle like this we no longer need this grid so delete okay in real life as the drops slide down the window they also leave behind a water trail so let's mimic that behavior for the trails let me go float trail equal and I want trail above our drop so I will use our drop positions y component so this is our drop position I will store it in a variable back to d pause for drop positions equals grid uv minus vec2 of xy and then use d pause in the length and that shouldn't change anything then let's go float trail equal smooth step of minus dr and dr then d pause dot y now add our trail to our output output plus equals trail and it is giving me opposite of what I want so let's flip these around so now we have black part below our drop and white above now let's cut a trail out of this so let's use another smooth step trail multiply equals smooth step and it will be similar to how I have cut out the drops so I want my trail width to be same as drop so dr then 0 0.01 and d pause of x and now I've cut this part out where our x is positive so to get the other part I will use absolute of d pause all right we have trails now obviously I want the trails to fade out at the top and I will use yet another smooth step for that and to fade the trail at the top I will use our grid box UV's Y component so one more time trail multiply equals smooth step now I know top part of grid UV is minus 0.5 then I want current y position of our drop in the grid box that will be this y so y and grid uv dot y and we have nice water trails pretty cool now our window is all black so let's first make it transparent and to do that I will use the screen texture screen texture is whatever we are seeing on the screen and to use the screen texture in our shader I need to use sampler 2d sampler 2d equals screen text and to use sampler 2d I must make it a uniform And because of that, now I have a slot for screen texture in the inspector, but I need screen as a texture. So to tell Godot to use screen as a texture, I need to set the hint. So screen text, then colon, hint, screen texture. Then in the fragment processor, let's sample our texture. So albedo equals let's go texture then I need to pass a texture to sample so screen tags 
and in the coordinates I need to pass screen UV and now texture function returns vector 4 and albedo is vector 3 so just take the RGB components and we have glass window then to add our raindrops I will simply subtract the result of our raindrops function from our screen UV okay we have our raindrops but it doesn't look like water at all that's because our raindrop function returns UVs that are kind of only goes in one direction let's just visualize that Now instead of this nonsense, I want UVs relative to the drop position in our grid box. So for that, I can simply multiply our output here with our drop position. And we can barely see anything, so let's multiply some bigger number here. Now we have some decent UVs. Let's see how it looks. Now our drops still have very strong refraction so instead of this 10 here let's use a uniform uniform float refraction equals 0 0.3 i also want to individually control the refraction of both our drop and trail so i will create two more uniforms uniform float drop strength equals 20 and uniform float trail strength equals 0 0.03 then let's multiply drop strength with drop I will also multiply by here to dial down the refraction as the drop fall down then multiply trail strength with trail and instead of this 10 let's use refraction and now we have much nice raindrops that look like water all right now due to the rain there will be higher humidity in the air and water vapor will also stick to the glass making it a bit foggy so to mimic that i want to make my screen texture a bit blurry and to make it blurry i will use mip maps of my screen texture mip maps are broad topic but just an overview they are lower resolution version of our texture and is used when we don't need too much details like for far away objects it's a concept similar to mesh LOD concept. Okay, now to use MIP maps, we first need to set the filter mode of our texture. So here where we define screen texture, after setting the hint, they go filter. And there are a bunch of filter modes here. I need filter linear MIP map. And you don't have to write this because it's the default mode. But it's good to know how to set the filter mode for a texture. Okay, then in our fragment processor, instead of texture, let's go texture LOD. Then I have to pass the third parameter here for LOD. If I pass 0, it will use the original screen texture. If I pass 1, it will use the half resolution version of our original texture. If I pass 2, it will use quarter resolution version of our original texture and so on and every time I increase this number it will use the half resolution version of the previous MIP map version and if I pass 2.5 it will interpolate between MIP map 2 and 3 alright now I want to control this from the inspector so you guessed it let's create another uniform Uniform float blur equals 3 then use this blur here 
And now I can control the fogginess from the inspector. But as you can see, it also make our water refraction blurry as well. And in real life, water drops will clear the fog. So I only want to pass the blur to our original screen UV and not to our water droplets. And to do that, I will use the result of our raindrops function. And to avoid calculating the same thing twice for a single pixel, let me store the result in the variable. Let's go back to two droplets equals raindrops. Then subtract droplets from the screen UV. And that shouldn't change anything. Then multiply our droplets with blur. And droplets are vector too, so let's just use any one channel. I will use X. Okay, it gives me opposite of what I want, so I will go 1 minus droplets of X into blur. That's not working properly for our trails. Let me just visualize droplets X. Albedo equals vector 3 droplets at x. So this is our x value. Let's use a smooth step. So smooth step and 0 0.05, 0 0.1 and the droplets dot x. That cuts out our trails a lot. So let's use smaller numbers. 0 0.001 and 0 0.01 okay this would work and now I want opposite of this so let's leave these numbers around and I will use this smooth step and multiply it with our blur Let me decrease the trail strength a bit. Okay, now it looks fine. And the cool thing is, we can have as many drops as we want by increasing the scale. At the same performance cost. Now one final thing, if I move away from my window, I don't know if you can see it properly, but our droplets will look very bad. The reason is we have too much details on very few pixels. This is the case why MIP maps were invented in the first place. Okay, so if I move far enough, I don't want to render my drops. And I can do that with fwidth function. So in my raindrops function, here let's go float fade equals f width of uv dot x okay so f width function i don't know how to properly explain this f width will return the distance between the current pixel and the neighboring pixel so if i'm looking at the object very closely the distance will be smaller and if i look at the object from far away the distance will be very big let's just visualize our f width so here, let's just return fade. And in the fragment processor, albedo equals droplets dot rrr. Okay, so if I'm closer, I will get black values. And if I go far away, I will get white value. Now I want opposite of this. I want white when I'm closer and black when far away. So here I will simply do 1 minus f width. I also want the control over distance. So let's make a uniform. Uniform float fade distance equals 5. Then multiply f width with fade distance. 
Now this can go beyond 1 and can also go less than 0. So let's just clamp it between 0 and 1. For that I will use clamp function. So clamp then pass the value we want to clamp then pass the minimum value 0 and maximum value 1 then multiply this fade with our actual output then in the fragment processor let's get rid of this line now if I'm closer our droplets will render just fine and if I move away far enough it won't render let me increase fade distance a bit so we can see it better pretty cool now we can also add a bunch of droplet layers as well so let's add one more uniform uniform and this time layers equals one then in fragment processor let's default our droplets to zero zero first now let's use a for loop for float i equals one i less than equals layers i plus plus and this layers is integer i need to cast it to float then in our loop let's go droplets plus equals raindrops now if i increase this number in the inspector our drops just slightly get more prominent because we are drawing three drop layers on top of each other to actually see the layers i need to pass some different scale speed and wiggle values for every layer to do that instead of directly using our uniforms in raindrops function let's use three input parameters float drop scale float drop speed float drop wiggle then instead of speed use drop speed instead of wiggle use drop wiggle instead of scale use drop scale then in the fragment processor let's pass the parameters so here let's pass scale then to use different scale each time I will multiply it with I and also with some smaller number do the same thing for speed and wiggle and we have different drop layers actually my first layer drops are looking too big let me set the dr to 0, 0.5 let's adjust our material Now one important thing, this layers are basically loop iterations. So as you increase this number, it will cost you performance because we are basically calculating stuff five times for each pixel. So use it carefully. Okay, if you have made it this far without skipping, thank you so much. It will really help me get monetized on YouTube as I needed to watch time. Also pat yourself on the back. This is by far the longest video I've ever made and that's pretty much the video. If you find the video helpful hit the like button, share it with your friends, subscribe for more videos like this. If you have any questions post them in the comments. Buy Cosmic Roads on Steam. If a precision platformer is not your cup of tea, just spread the word. That's it from me and I will see you guys in the next one.